Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Mark's RC. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Let's take a minute to enjoy this opening scene here. Got a fresh new bumper on there from Enjora. Nice find on Amazon. Love the shackles on the thing. They move nice and freely. So nice little scale detail. You get to see some movement. Kind of like the uh, C24 does a little bit. Except they don't clank around like that does. Kind of a little bit of note about this, uh, this whole segment coming up. I do think that my motorized uh, three-axis gimbal shut down at some point in time while I was filming this whole segment. Luckily, it stayed balanced enough, and uh, the in-camera stabilization made the footage usable enough. But you can see um, some funky little stuff going on from side to side. And basically, that's the in-camera stabilization trying to do the best it can to keep up with the fact that the mount just gave out which is something that does happen from time to time. But I really like this whole sequence coming up where this is driving through this shallow bit of the creek here with all the, you know, stones. Uh, and I didn't, want to, I didn't want to toss this footage. But you can really see it in a couple spots as I'm moving along where the camera definitely is... It's free-floating in the mount, unfortunately. So image stabilization is doing the best it can to, to keep up with it. My apologies for all the background noise. I live on a very busy road in, in Vermont. And uh, you'll oftentimes hear probably some uh, just background traffic noise. You're going to see a new set of uh, beadlock wheels on this. Those are from Injura as well. Uh, they're the ones that have 20... Um, screws on the outside on the beadlock ring. These things are an absolute bear to put together. <clears throat> However, uh, I figured out that the bolts are the same size as the RC four-wheel drive stamp, sta uh, stamp steel beadlock wheels. So I came up with a five, five and five lug pattern in there so you don't see 20 screws around the inside. Uh, you see just five silver you can barely see the heads of five black ones, uh, and they alternate every other hole as well. Once again, sorry about that semi driving by. I can't record a voiceover at, at any point in time, really, unless it's done like in the evening or something like that, and it's not going to incorporate some kind of silly noise. So being able to mount those wheels... Uh, with those screws like that then makes it kind of look a little bit better so you can deep dish them so you don't see a big ring of silver screw heads uh, sitting on the inside of the wheel. In fact, you barely see the five uh, spinning around. So I found a way to kind of camouflage it a little bit because I really do like how these look deep dished on this thing. I think it kind of set it off a little bit. An entirely different look than the stamp seal beadlocks, but kind of similar in a way. And that's why I chose the opening shot. Just nice one. So you'll see, this is my second attempt. There's a wet tire track on the rock to the right there. But I try and adjust here. And the servo just pulls the whole truck down into that little thing. Instead of just turning the wheels, it turns the whole truck. Which kind of worked out better. And I apologize in advance for kicking the camera with my foot here in a second. It just happened. I was so close. Boom, right there. But this whole sequence right here is kind of why I'm enjoying having this Jeep. I 
do like watching some of the SEX-10-2 Rubicon stuff, some of the videos like Hoon's RC, stuff like that. The guy filmed some great looking video of those in action. So this is kind of like my, that's my satisfaction to it. That's what I need. I don't need to go and get into yet another platform. So it's kind of why I haven't wandered down the Axial SEX-10-2 road um, because I just have so many other irons in the fire. And it just makes sense to get a small scale like this, which barely puts any kind of, you know, major dent in the wallet. And if you caught the last video for this, or the last couple of videos, I paid 65 bucks for this crawler, and I've probably put 15 bucks in it on that bumper. And everything else is just stuff I had sitting around, including, time to make note, that back bumper came off of the Hobby Plus uh, CR18. It had light buckets in the back, so it got amber lights, and it got swapped out. And I did some modification. I used the Hoppy Plus uh, rear bumper mount. The whole pattern does not match up. But while I'm in talking about bumper mounts matching up, for those of who you, you are who are curious, uh, the Axial SEX24 hole pattern is the same on the front bumper on this. This is why that SEX24 bumper is sitting on there. I think scale-wise, I've looked at enough videos and enough photos of Jeeps that that's almost a little closer to scale than what it is sitting on the SEX 24s um, in terms of width, how much it cuts in, light location, uh, height of that bar and everything like that. I didn't want a full like uh, pointed stinger. I just wanted one that sort of matched the, the line right there in the front. I could bring the hood down one more location, but I'd rather not stuff the wheels and fenders every time I'm doing anything. So it's going to stay that way. And it doesn't really bother me at all. I think it looks fine. Definitely liking having this thing around. Glad I picked it up. Glad I've invested the time and effort into it. It's definitely a fun little crawler to run. I guess a note on the tires too, I finally put the uh, original foams back in. I liked the droop that it had with the foams that I was running. However, it kind of felt like it would fold a little too much uh, for my tastes. And so this thing was getting heavy enough. Uh, and plus it's got a couple of other things that are gonna get done to it to add more weight. And so I kind of felt like the foams, uh, the original foams needed to go back in. So I did discover a note on those foams, if you get those and right fresh out of the package, you throw them in and you don't try and break those foams in at all, they will, without a doubt, be too stiff. You won't really feel much compression on the tires. They'll feel like they just have, uh, I don't, they're just too stiff. So if you take them and you ball that foam up and kind of just rub it back and forth between your hands like, like Play-Doh or something like that, uh, and work them, you know, for a couple seconds, uh, it really just breaks them in and makes them nice and soft and pliable. So that's also one of the reasons why they went back into this, uh, just because they, <clears throat> I was able to get them soft enough. So here I am just scrubbing the walls of the tub here. Left rear finally catches traction, heats up enough. That's because the tires are damp. They just went through water just a few minutes before this. Now it's back on like a wetter, moister surface again. But it bites on and goes up. Thanks for watching, folks. Appreciate you being here. Be nice if people would stop unsubscribing when I post videos. That would be great. I'd appreciate that. It always kind of bums me out when I post a video and I look back and a couple, of people, a couple, three people have left. So yeah, that's always kind of sad. Uh, but it has been growing, I will say. Uh, it finally sort of has crept up out of the slump that it was in. So that is certainly much appreciated. Uh, it seems to have kind of picked up a few more subs here in the last last month. That's not the most important thing to me, but when it was growing like it was, and all of a sudden it really just fell right off for about the last six months, I began to get a little worried. So thanks for being here. I do appreciate it. See you on the next one.